Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. In the Hollywood entertainment scene, critics describe several actors as gentlemen, but very few are worthy of being described as perfect gentlemen. Carl Malden is just one of those honourable personalities that you will always wonder how they pull through the good, the bad and the ugly entertainment arena without any publicity shame attached to their name. Did he benefit from the dignified career that he enjoyed? Why Carl Malden considered himself unsaleable? I want you to know, my viewers, how much I appreciate you. Without your support, these videos wouldn't be possible. Thank you for those who hit the thanks button. I am still awed by historical facts about Carl Malden and how he accomplished so much in his career and private life, despite the much complicated atmosphere he operated all through. As a unique character actor, Malden was a man you would love. Almost everyone that knew him would tell you that he was an exceptional colleague, and those opportune to watch his movies say they always enjoy his performances. You know that kind of, oh yeah, feeling when you see the beginning of a movie and your favourite actor's name is featured on the opening credit. I guess you normally would pull your chair backward like me because you already know something interesting is coming up. Maybe this is how I feel about Carl Malden's personality in movies. Fortunately, the same charisma is what he replicated in his personal life off the screen. A writer said that when Malden's death was announced, the press did not talk much about him, considering his all-encompassing reputation in the industry. Many concluded that he was much older at the time of his demise, as the reason unlike actors ending suddenly while still in their active age. I take exception to that because I do know the bad publicity is good news for the media, and when there is none, everything stays quiet. Those of us who captured some of the events that made Carl Malden who he is in life and career will tell you that he was a big prize to humanity. Some say he is an actor with Hollywood fame, but not the scandal. This Academy Award-winning actor in his discreet nature is unforgettable, especially in supporting roles where he always shined. Carl Malden's spectacular talent was felt in movies, on stage and the television. If you did not know much about Malden but still remember his wonderful image, I'm here to take you on a cursory journey down memory lane as we reflect on the things that made his career life an exemplary character. Some aspect of Malden's lifestyle was quite charming. The media in particular observed that even when he was in trouble, he still does his things as if nothing had happened, something that made him very likeable when he granted interviews. Are you among those who said he was more like a character typecast? Of course, excluding what his character did in the Baby Doll production, you are not far from the truth. Critics said he introduced simplicity and authenticity to roles in his movies from that remarkable A Streetcar Named Desire to The Streets of San Francisco. Malden was blazingly outstanding. I thought it was a genuine joke to say because of his crooked, bulbous nose that disfigured him while he was doing school sports. Facts suggest that he decided that he was not good enough as a leading man, hence had solidified his roles in the supporting wing. He was once quoted to have said he wanted to be number one in the number two roles he was destined to play. What a destiny for such a meticulous character. Carl Malden may have lived an ideal kind of life that most people would like to have. Recall that months after experiencing his 70th marriage anniversary with his lovely wife, he was said to have died peacefully in his sleep, the more reason he was described as every man's ideal. His efforts were rewardingly recognised as an honourable member of the Hollywood community with an Oscar for Best Supporting Role in A Streetcar Named Desire. A vivacious advertiser, Malden was also remarkable as a commercial salesman, and was grateful for the series of commercials he made for American Express Traveller's Checks with that epic catchphrase, Don't leave home without them. Why? Because of the financial freedom added to his pocket. It is true that it made him more relaxed and enabled him to carefully choose his movie roles. Apart from the notable classic films that most fans praised him for, this fine gentleman is loved for his unrelenting belief in family life, especially for his scandal-free extended years of marital life. Did I hear you say he made a showbiz groundbreaking marital record with his wife? 
I guess it takes a lot of discipline for a Hollywood superstar to achieve that. Like a true hero, Carl Malden did not falter when his service was needed by the United States Army. He was in action with the Army Air Corps Hap Arnold Wings between 1942 and 1946. He was said to have actively fought in World War II and rose to the rank of Army USA or 05 Army Greens Sergeant and about three regimented award ribbons from U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force Presidential Unit, American Campaign Medal and World War II Victory Medal. Carl Malden was born Mladen Skakulovich in Chicago sometime in 1912 and had much of his childhood in his parents' Indiana home. His Serbian father, Petar Skakulovich, loved music so much while his mother Minnie may have acted as an actress in her early years. For some reason, little Malden spoke only Serbian until he began nursery school. Those close to him said he spoke the language fluently for the rest of his life. His father's interest in music made him put together the Serbian Singing Federation, which united immigrant choral groups across the U.S. Growing up under close-knitted faith, young Malden found himself regularly singing for Carador de Coir in St. Sava Serbian Orthodox Church, where his busy father made plays and acting lessons. Malden was often cast in those dramas that focused mainly on Serbian culture. His energetic lifestyle made him popular even in high school, where he became a famous student thanks to his basketball skills. It was while in action for the school team that Malden got injured on his nose. The incident left an indelible mark that became part of his facial identity. Young and vibrant Malden was very occupied as a teenager, appearing also in the school drama. All that popularity won him a place as senior class president, and so when he left Emerson High School in 1931, he had some ideas about what he wanted for himself, but few circumstances stood in his way, and sooner he became a steel worker. About three years later, he concluded that the job was not what he wanted and decided to look elsewhere. Malden applied for a scholarship to Goodman Theatre of Chicago's Art Institute, with the hope of constructing the backdrop because of his carpentry knowledge, but shortly he discovered his real talent as a stage performer, rather than working behind the scenes. So, when he relocated to New York and had a bit role in Harold Clerman's group theatre drama Golden Boy, he got himself acquainted with a man who would inspire him for the rest of his life, Elia Kazan. His first professional advice to Malden was for him to have his name changed, which he did from Mladen Sekulovich to Carl Malden, in line with the theatre company's request for him to shorten his name. It was reported that Malden thought he was going to be penalised if he did not change his name, so he hurriedly did and momentarily was acting and telling fans how he regretted changing his name. I'm not sure if there was some sort of backlash from his parents that made him subtly include Sekulovich, his original name, in most of his movies, or just something best known to him. Appearing as General Omar Bradley in Patton, while his army battle with the enemy fire in Sicily, Malden was heard saying to an unknown soldier, Hand me that helmet, Sekulovich. Again, he did a similar thing in Dead Ringer. As a police investigator, Malden calls another officer that name by saying, Sekulovich, give me my hat. Maybe he would have reversed the name if it was convenient for him, but it wasn't. So he continued reminding his fans that the man in action is still the Sekulovich they know. While appearing as Jimmy Pearsall's father John in Fear Strikes Out, Malden refers to a baseball talent scout as Sekulovich while introducing him to his son. But one that got me cracking with laughter is when in Birdman of Alcatraz he was acting as a prison warden doing a tour of the cells and calling out the names of the inmates. He added, Sekulovich. His father was said to have reacted by telling him that he would have used Mladen because no Sekulovich has been jailed before. The senior Sekulovich was not pleased with that usage of his name. Perhaps Dad did not understand that he so loved his lineage so much that he wanted the name to be as famous as himself. Recall also that in On the Waterfront production, portraying a priest, Malden inserts the name Mladen Sekulovich among the 374 local officials that appear in the courtroom scene. The character was played by Fred Gwynne. Critics did believe that he regretted changing his name and tried all he could to carry the name along. Recall that also in his television series, The Streets of San Francisco, 
Malden's character, Mike Stone, would name a leg man depicted by Art Passarella, which he employed with the name. Malden was at his best in 1951 when he appeared as Mitch, Blanche's suitor, in A Streetcar Named Desire, a production that did not just give him fame and Oscar recognition, but made him a perfect hero and a choice actor for several years. Critics said it set the stage for several juicy military characters in movies like Winged Victory and Kiss of Death, among others. His character in movies was very decent all through until he appeared in that controversial baby doll as a cotton gin owner, a production that got backlash from the Catholic community for its sexually explicit content. Almost everyone felt that Malden lived a fulfilled life in his career and marriage. He met and married Mona Greenberg in 1938, the duo relished in a blissful union for over 70 uninterrupted years before the inevitable hands of death snatched him away. Before then, the marriage, now seen as one of the longest Hollywood matrimonies, produced his two daughters, Miller and Carla. Several things about Malden were revealed in his memoir, published in 1997, as written by his intelligent daughter Carla, titled When Do I Start? Carl Malden inspired many, including his two daughters, who saw him as a fantastic father. Carla did reveal a few things about her father that made him a man to be admired. He was funny and caring. He was like a big child himself, she stated, the reason even children adored him, the way he respected them. He is a kind of father who is often absent on set, so he can take care of his children. He made his kids work with him whenever he was at home. I remember me and my sister rehearsing his songs from Gypsy after dinner every night, she said. Carla said her dad, after watching Laurence Olivier do adverts campaign for Polaroid cameras, decided that he could do the same. He shot one advertisement weekly for American Express for 21 years, and he was OK with its income. Similarly, Miller recalled the opening of her father's performance in the 1962 musical, saying he was goofy, warm and sweet. He was careful in choosing his role and ensured they were each different from each other, so he was never pigeonholed, according to Miller. Recall that Malden navigated from the enduring sergeant character to that of a gentle priest, plus the crunchy detective role, all of which he played perfectly, but this talented superstar still believes that his financial life would have been deplorable if not for his twenty-year stint as a pitchman for American Express. Did he put 150% of himself into whatever he did as suggested by Miller? For his two daughters, Malden should be remembered not just for his achievement, but for his united family life with his great-grandchildren. He was not a difficult personality, always loving and grateful, Carla stated, a man who considered himself extremely fortunate to be surrounded by a family that adored him. On the roles he usually played as a supporting actor, Malden once stated that he knew all the time that he would never be a leading man. Why? I never thought I was saleable, mainly because of the facial signature that is identified with him. He still recalled how he learned during his second year in school drama that he was never going to make it to the top character actor, so he decided to be the best in the supporting capacity. He appeared in over 50 film roles, which he ended in 2000, with that of Father Thomas Kavanagh in the West Wing TV series. On what colleagues think about him, Eva Marie Saint, who featured with Malden in On the Waterfront production and was also a neighbour, described him as a consummate actor. He thought he never changed because he always became the character. He never falls. There's never a false move from him, she had said. Malden once hinted that he never thought he was going to win the Oscar at the time he did. It reflected in the way he went for the event. Then his family was in New York and he was on location shooting on the West Coast. So he practically drove himself to the venue of the event in an outdated green-rented Chevy. But on arrival he was somewhat ill at ease to see the limousines pulling up from all corners for the ceremony. You know what it feels like when you are nobody amidst those that think they are 100% better than you. That is what the atmosphere became for Malden and before he could say Jack Robinson, two exotic cars had already parked and blocked his exit, and behold, he won the award. Critics think Malden defined another way to be a celebrity. After working so hard and earning much, he acquired fame and wealth, but lived a quiet, exemplary private life. 
devoid of unnecessary public scrutiny, and died contented at the age of 93. Some people have a good reputation in Hollywood, some don't. The truth behind Ralph Bellamy's undeserved reputation. Watch our video.